The email story is where we begin tonight. Chief Washington correspondent James Rosen is here with details. Good evening, James. Brett, good evening. The latest WikiLeaks posting of hacked emails to and from Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta lays bare what to many eyes appears to be evidence of collusion on two fronts. First, between the Clinton campaign and the woman who is now the head of the Democratic National Committee against the Sanders campaign during the Democratic primaries, and between the Clinton campaign and the Department of Justice during the Clinton email investigation. Let's welcome Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont. When Bernie Sanders stepped on stage for this CNN TV One town hall event in March, he probably didn't know that the evening before, Donna Brazil, then a CNN commentator and vice chair of the Democratic National Committee, now head of the DNC, had sent an email to the Clinton campaign captioned, from time to time I get the questions in advance, and saying, here's one that worries me about HRC, flagging a question intended for Clinton on the death penalty. The question noted that since 1976... To 14 people in this country. Clinton's communications director, Jen Palmieri, seemed grateful for Brazil's assistance, writing back that evening to say, yes, it is one she gets asked about. Not everyone on the campaign staff likes her answer, but can share it with you. Brazil only became interim DNC chair during the party's convention in July, after a WikiLeaks dump of DNC emails revealed pervasive collusion between Brazil's predecessor, Deborah Wasserman Schultz, and the Clinton campaign against the Sanders forces. Today, Brazil said she supported both candidates and, quote, often shared her thoughts with both. As it pertains to the CNN debates, I never had access to questions and would never have shared them with the candidates if I did, except that the event in question was not a CNN debate, but a town Hall. And all you have to do is take a look at WikiLeaks and just see what they said about Bernie Sanders. He never had a chance, and I was so surprised to see him sign on with the devil. The Podesta emails also show Clinton campaign press secretary Brian Fallon, formerly a spokesman for the Department of Justice, getting a heads up from an unnamed DOJ official on the night of May 18th, 2015. Hey, Brian, this was filed tonight. Fourteen minutes later, Fallon emailed Clinton confidant Cheryl Mills to relate the tip. DOJ just filed a briefing saying, the government proposes releasing HRC's cache of work-related emails in January 2016. Get out, exclaimed Mills. Palmieri then looped in Podesta and Huma Abedin to set a conference call for the morning. This will be a thing tomorrow, and she is in front of the press. Neither the Clinton campaign nor the Sanders campaign responded to our request for comment today. Brett. James, there's new evidence tonight about the Clinton Foundation investigation, if you will. We just don't know how far it got. Yes, we've been covering this in depth on this show, and the WikiLeaks documents reveal that Chelsea Clinton, back in December 2011, sent an email to John Podesta and others voicing her, quote, serious concerns about Teneo, the private firm run by Doug Band, a top aide to former President Clinton and a Clinton Foundation officer. Teneo was also the employer of Huma Abedin while she worked simultaneously for the State Department. Chelsea wrote that her father would be, quote, horrified by the way Teneo was drumming up business overseas using the Clinton name. For months now, the Clinton campaign and the State Department have denied any pay for play between the foundation and Mrs. Clinton's aides at state. There was uh, no quid pro quo or anything like that here. We have seen no evidence of any uh, behavior, any uh, relations with the Clinton Foundation that weren't completely above board. Uh, and in this case, uh, it's likely that uh, what they were dealing with uh, during many of these calls was the immediate aftermath of the uh, Haiti earthquake. Today, however, State Department emails obtained by the Republican National Committee and first reported by ABC News show that a top aide to Secretary Clinton, in the hours after the devastating earthquake that struck Haiti in 2010, instructed officers at the Clinton Foundation when sifting through offers of medical aid and humanitarian assistance to distinguish between offers coming from, quote, FOB or Friends of Bill and those originating elsewhere. Caitlin Clavoric also referred to WJC VIPs, meaning very important people tied to William Jefferson. And Clinton. Those who fell outside those categories were to be directed to USAID. The State Department once again today denied any favoritism. What I'd say is we've seen no evidence that tr preferential treatment was given to okay. anybody uh, based on their association uh, with the Clinton Foundation or with the former president himself. And in response to all of this, Donald Trump tweeted today, and I quote, Crooked's State Department gave special attention to, quote, friends of Bill after the Haiti earthquake. Unbelievable, unquote, Brett.
now it's just down to crookeds. Um, James, very quickly, you know, when you talk about this with the Clinton campaign or Democrats, they say, listen, this is all about Russia. Russia hacked these emails. We don't have any indication that they're denying that these things are real. In fact, Hillary Clinton in the debate referenced a speech where she said she was talking about Abe Lincoln. That's in the emails, in the transcripts of the speech. So that is the response you get. Right. And in, at no point does anyone challenge the authenticity of these documents. We do always have to be careful when we're looking at them to make sure they're authentic and, and not doctored in any way. But so far, there is no indication of that. Okay. James, thank you very much.